Welcome to the Word of the Lord, the weekly television broadcast of Living Word Christian Church, proclaiming the good news of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pastor Mark Clements, in-depth, relevant biblical teachings will help you in life and living in today's world. Now, let's join Pastor Clements in the service already in progress. In the, in the uh, 21st chapter of the book of Matthew, and if you're joining us uh, on, on the broadcast or on one of our social media outlets, welcome. Good morning. Glad that you're glad that you're with us. It may not be morning wherever you're at, and wherever you're watching, but uh, we're glad that you're tuned in. Thank you. God bless you. We're in Matthew chapter 21. If you have a Bible and would like to turn with us, this broadcast comes across a little bit later. But right now it's Sunday morning and it's Palm Sunday. It's Palm Sunday. Uh, the 14th of April, uh, 2019, and we're glad you're tuned in. Palm Sunday is, is traditionally that day that we celebrate in Christian churches all over the world, and, and the theme is always rejoicing. It's always praising God. It's always worship. It's always blessing the Lord. It's always praise. It's always praise. And uh, no different this morning. Uh, that's what we're going to focus on. Is, is praising and being a praiser, worship, and being a worshiper, being one who blesses the Lord. Not sometimes, but at all times. I will bless the Lord at, at all times, at all times. Now, last week, one of our young members came and, and, and shared with me a couple of verses out of uh, uh, Psalm, uh, and, and I got to look back at that uh, uh, later that day, and then again during the week, and, and, and then again uh, even this morning, uh, and, and, and I go back, and I look at Psalm 145. Now, he shared with me Psalm 146, Psalm 148. But, uh, but, but as I look at Psalm 145, uh, l- look at these verses with me. And, and, and they're also on our screen. And if you're watching, turn in your Bible. But it says, verse 1 of Psalm 145, I will extol thee, my God, O King. I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day, now think about this in just a moment. Every day I will bless you and will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. Psalm 146 verse 1 says, Praise ye the Lord, praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Psalm 147, verse 1 says, Praise ye the Lord. That means you praise Him. It's good to sing praises to our God. It's pleasant, and praise is appropriate. See, it's always appropriate to praise the Lord. The next Psalm, verse 148, Psalm 148, verse 1 says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. Verse 2, Praise ye Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all of His hosts, all of His people. You praise Him. Psalm 149, verse 1, Sing unto the Lord, praise ye the Lord, sing unto the Lord a new song, and praise His praise in the congregation of His people. And then Psalm 150, Praise ye the Lord, praise God in His sanctuary, in the firmament of His power, praise Him for His mighty acts, and according to His excellent greatness, praise Him with the sound of the trumpet, psaltery and harp, with timbrel and dance, with stringed instruments and organs, on loud cymbals and high-sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. And then I love the way this psalm ends. All the psalms end with Psalm 150, verse 6. It says, you praise Him. Don't leave it to the worship team. Don't leave it to the cassette tape or the CD or the DVD or or, or the YouTube channel, uh, the worship team from some other nation. You praise the Lord. You praise the Lord. Don't leave it to anyone else. You be a praiser. You be a praiser. Now, if I go back to uh, Psalm 145, it says, I will exalt, excuse me, extol uh, you, my God, O King. I will bless your name forever and ever. And then it says, every day. That means Monday. That means Tuesday, that means Wednesday, that means Thursday, that means Friday, that means Saturday, that means Sunday. That means good days, that means the bad days. That that, that means wonderful days and that means horrible days. That means challenging days, that means easy restful days. When all the winds are calm (coughs) and and, and all the waters are calm and the sky is blue and the the winds are light uh, and, and, and everything is right with the world. What should I do? Praise Him. 
<coughs> and the wind blows strong, and, and things are coming down and crashing all around, what should I do? Praise Him. And everywhere in between. Yeah, don't wait for things to, <coughs> to be wonderful. Don't wait for things to go your way. Don't wait for everything to make you, make you happy. Uh, praise the Lord anyway. Yeah, praise the Lord anyway. Otherwise, otherwise what you do, <coughs> you fall into this category called conditional praisers. And they praise the Lord just based on conditions. And if conditions are right, I'll praise Him. And if conditions aren't right, I won't. And as a matter of fact, if conditions are bad, I'll complain. I don't want to be one of those people. I don't want to be one of those people. That, that, I know you want to be one of those kind of people. Every day I'll praise him. Yeah. Now let's go. So what does that do, have to do with Palm Sunday? It has everything to do with it. Go, go back to the first Palm Sunday in Matthew chapter 21. And we see Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And we see that, that they drew nigh to Jerusalem, and, and it goes through, and he sends them out to get him a ride, and they bring back the, uh, the donkey, and, and he came riding in. And it says uh, in verse 8 that a very great multitude, will you say that with me? A very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strew them in the way. That's where we get the term Palm Sunday, cut down palms. And they, what they're doing really here is they're putting out the red carpet. They obviously didn't have a red carpet, but, but you know, when the dignitaries from another, uh, another country uh, arrive in your country and, and, and they come down, they, you, they give them a, two things. They give them a, the red carpet treatment. They roll out the red carpet and they give them a ticker tape parade. And so that's what this was. And Jesus' is triumphal entry, and, and they're giving him their ticker tape parade, and they're giving him the, the red carpet treatment. They're laying their garments in front of him, and they're taking down branches in the trees and laying them in the way, and they're shouting at the top of their lungs. And what is it that they're shouting? They followed him, verse 9. And the multitudes that went before him and that followed him cried out, saying, Hosanna, that means glory to the God who saves us. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city, now everybody heard him. That's a lot of noise. Everyone heard them. Jerusalem is bigger than La Crosse, Wisconsin. And think about a parade in one part of La Crosse, Wisconsin that the whole city hears. The whole town heard him coming in and, and, and questioned about it. Now, if we go over, now there's some other great teaching on this Palm Sunday. The next verses, 12 through 16, talk about the cleansing of the temple. And then 17 through 22, the cursing of the fig tree, and that great statement, what things soever you, you, you pray for, believing you shall receive, and that great lesson on faith. But we're going to focus on another aspect. Over in Luke 19, we have Luke's account of Jesus riding in, and, and, and what we would call the, the, the first Palm Sunday. Jesus' entry into Jerusalem, and, and, and it says in verse 37, when he was come near... Even now at the bottom of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God. That's what Palm Sunday is all about, isn't it? Rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they'd seen, saying, Blessed be the King that comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven, glory in the highest. And then when the Pharisees tried to contend with them about their praise, he answered in verse 40 and said, I tell you this, that if they would hold their peace, if they'd be quiet, the stones would cry out. The stones would worship him and praise him, and the stones would cry out and rejoice in him. Now, this was Palm Sunday. I mean, I've seen a few of Hollywood's attempts, and usually it's about 18 people out there going, hey, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, and they're throwing a few leaves down in front of him. Hey, glory to God, praise the Lord. No, the whole city, the whole city heard it and came out, and it was a very great, not a multitude. I mean, a multitude is big. But this was a great multitude. No, no, no. This wasn't a great multitude. A great multitude is bigger than a multitude. This was a very great multitude. And they were all saying, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. I mean, they, they I believe, would rival any praise that's ever risen out of this church. Or out of any church I've ever been in, for that matter. They were shouting some praise to the Lord for the great things he'd done, for the great things he had seen. They were exuberant. They were enthusiastic. They were excited. They were happy, and they were praising the Lord. This was chapter 19 of the book of Luke. 
Skip ahead with me just a couple pages and really just a couple of days. Just a couple of days. To chapter 22. We're just in chapter 19. 20 and 21 go through the next two days. And then chapter 22, he's in the Garden of Gethsemane with his closest followers, and he's arrested. Starting with verse 47, he's arrested. Peter denies him, and he's taken to Pilate, Pontius Pilate. And in verse 20, chapter 23, verse 1, what does your Bible say? And the whole multitude of them arose and led him to Pilate. Now, what whole multitude was this? Now, now, this must have been the whole multitude from, like, Galilee. The whole multitude from Samaria. This must have been all of the people from Egypt. This had to be some of the people from Mesopotamia or come down from Damascus. No, 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 this is the same multitude. This is the same city. This is the same place that three days earlier they'd been shouting, blessed is he who comes in the Lord, blessed is the son of David, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, blessed be the king of Israel. And, and now, now these three days later, the whole multitude takes him before Pilate. Now Pilate wants to let him go. If you read this carefully, you see in verse 16, he says, I will chastise him and then I'll release him. And they, verse 18, they cried out all at once. All. All of them cried out at once. And said, away with this man, release to us Barabbas. For a certain man made sedition in, in, in the city and for murder was cast into prison. And Pilate, willing to release Jesus, said, again, said it to him again. And they cried out, crucify him, crucify him. Think about it. We have a great Christian day, and we celebrate these people. We celebrate their rejoicing. We celebrate them taking the branches off the trees and throwing their garments and clothing in the way. We celebrate that they were so happy that their king had, had come, that the Redeemer had come, that the son of David had entered town, that, that God had saved us, Hosanna, Hosanna. And they were shouting, and they were praised. And then three days later, their praise of him turns to condemnation of him. And three days later, the same multitude, all of them, are shouting, crucify him, crucify him. Now, do we take up this account as an indictment against these people? No. We don't even know these people. We don't know who they are. What we do is we extract from this account something to help each one of us, and that is to be aware that human nature, somewhere in human nature it is, to praise God when things go our way and when we're happy and, and when, when life is good, everything's good at home, everything's good at work, everything's good at school, everything's good in my body, everything's good with those people that I love. Praise the Lord. But if everything breaks down and everything has, has just gone south, so to speak, I hurt everywhere, the people I love, are hurting, I'm having financial issues and woes, and things are coming against me in, in several different uh, ways, in several different directions, it's not just quite as automatic to say, praise the Lord. How's everything? It is well with my soul. See, that, 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 that's a little more of a challenge. That's a little more of a challenge. More of human nature than we'd really like to admit <clears throat> we can see in the Israelites. In the Israelites in Exodus, and rather than turn back, I'm just going to just briefly reference these verses. But in the book of Exodus, we see the Israelites, and they are slaves. They are incarcerated in the, the nation of Egypt, and they are crying to God. When God went to Moses and appeared to him, what did he say? He said, the cries of my people are come up before me. I hear their groanings. I hear their cries to be delivered. I'm sending you to deliver them. Moses went down. God delivered them through his leadership. They were led out. And, I mean, happy. 
We're 400 and some odd years we're in slavery, and now we're going free. We can worship God freely. We can be with our families. We don't have to build idols. I mean, we don't have the whip on our back and the, and the sole of the boot of an evil taskmaster on our throat. We don't have that. We're, we're, just, we're so happy. All they did was get down to the Red Sea, and there sat the Red Sea before him. Insurmountable obstacle. What did they start to do? Well, they started to praise the Lord. They started, no, they didn't do that. They started to complain. They complained at their lot in life. Happy yesterday, happy an hour ago. Now they're at the edge of the Red Sea, and the Egyptian armies are coming, and they start to complain to Moses. And the Lord says, Moses, stretch forth your staff. He stretched forth his staff. The, the sea opens up, and they walk across dry shod. And all the Egyptians are drowned pursuing them. Are they happy? Oh, yes. Chapter 15 says they break out the tambourines, and they break out the harps, and they start to dance, and they start to sing. We're happy the Lord just delivered us. He answered our cry. He answered our prayer. He did what we wanted. In verse 20, Exodus 15, Miriam the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a timbrel in her hand, all the women with her, and with timbrels and dances and answers, sing unto the Lord, he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and the rider are thrown into the street. Read the next verse. And Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went to the wilderness, and they went how many days? They went three days and found no water, and it says they started to murmur. Verse 24, and they began to murmur. Now, is this an isolated incident? No, it, it followed them and plagued them their entire existence. He made the water healthy to drink, and by chapter 16, verse 1, they left and they journeyed, and verse 2, the whole congregation murmured against Moses and Aaron. Why? They didn't have anything to eat. Didn't have anything to eat. And manna came out of heaven. Are you kidding? Rejoice. Hey, call out to your neighbors. Look at this manna. Isn't this great? Isn't the Lord wonderful? The Lord is so tremendous. Praise the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. He saved us. He sustained us. By chapter 17, they're murmuring again. Chapter 17, verse 1. And, and they started their journey, didn't have anything to drink, and they began to chide Moses. And verse 3, they murmured. <coughs> and this followed them throughout their entire existence. Every time the way got hard, things got difficult. Instead of just staying the way they were and being consistent, they, they, they'd vacillate, they'd be all over the map. And if things were going well in life, they would praise the Lord. And if there was a challenge, if there was an obstacle in their path, they would begin to murmur and grumble and complain. That's what they, that, that was their MO. That was their testimony. That was their reputation. That, that, that's just the way they lived until they finally got on to Numbers chapter 15, and the Lord said, enough. I have tolerated this for the last time, and it was when they were murmuring about why have you brought us out here. They sent the spies into the land, and the spies came back and said, there's giants in the land. I, you and I would have said, praise the Lord. There are giants in the land, and, and we're grasshoppers in their sight, and there's no way we can. And, 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 and they all began to murmur against Moses and said, we want to go back to Egypt. We had it better than that. They didn't have it better there. But every time there was a challenge, they began to complain about it. See, it would behoove us to understand why Philippians 2.14 is actually in the Bible, and it's addressed to us, and it says, do everything without murmuring and complaining. When the Lord told them that they had stayed out in the wilderness for 40 years, when it was only an 8 to 10 day journey, 8 to 10 days you could walk across there. And, it took, and they stayed out there 40 years. And he said, it's because you complained. That's what he said. He said, because you didn't serve the Lord with gladness of heart and joyfulness for the abundance of all things. That's the reason you were cursed. That's the reason the curse came upon them. And every time they complained, he said, one more trip around the mountain. And they just walked out there, like just wandering. They weren't ready for the best of God. They weren't ready for the promised land. They never, ever learned the lesson, and they all died in the wilderness except Joshua and Caleb. All of them. All of them. They were inconsistent. Inconsistent. Circumstance-driven praisers. When things went their way, they were happy about it. When things went their way and they were happy, they praised the Lord. When things didn't go that way, their way, they were unhappy, and they stopped praising him and fell into grumbling and murmuring and complaining. 
That's just the way they lived. Now, I can see that happening 4,000 years ago. I can see it happening even 2,000 years ago with Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he, crucify him, crucify him. But that would never happen in the 21st century, would it? That would never happen. I mean, not, not. listen, pastor, <clears throat> none of them were born again. I know, and that's why it's such a surprise that it still happens among people that are. But human nature is human nature, whether the spirit's been regenerated or not. And that nature is still exists within people. God delivered you from slavery. Why aren't you praising him? Because we got an ocean in front of us, an army behind us. What's that got to do with praising him for being delivered from slavery? He crosses the Red Sea and you're dancing and you're happy because you got, got through the Red Sea and your enemies are drowned in the depths. But then you start complaining because you have no water. What, what about being delivered from your enemies? How come you're not still praising about that just three days later? And the water's safe to drink, and they drink, and they're happy, and they're praising God again. And then they realize, what's that sound? That's your belly growling. We haven't eaten for three days. Three days? We can't go any longer than that. That'd be a forced fast. Can't have that. And, 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 and the Lord rains manna out of heaven. Manna. Do you know the day came when manna was no longer good enough for them? And they complained about manna. I'd have shut it off. They're glad I wasn't God. No, no, the Lord said, you're not happy with manna? No, we don't like this loathsome light bread. That's what, that's what their words were. This is disgusting to us. <laughs> no more. You're in the middle of the desert. Tell me what you're going to eat now. Try sand. Huh? Sand cake, sand patties. Sand over sand, easy over sand. There's nothing else out there, folks. And they're complaining about what God is providing. Because they had it for a while, and now they want something else. This is, this is all human nature. And what once was a great blessing to them, and they were so happy about that they shouted and rejoiced, now they're complaining about it. So he blows quail, some of the translations say doves, and he blows them in on the east wind to the point where they were up to their nostrils. That, that's pretty deep. There, there's your meat. And boy, they ate it, and after 30 days, they were sick and tired of it, and they didn't want it anymore. Take it away complained about it. And this is again and again and again and again and again and again. They have it for a while and then, but, but that would never happen today, right? That would never happen today. No? No? I, 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 I'm a pastor and I get to rejoice with lots and lots of young couples and they come running up and they just can't wait to, to walk the aisle. And they show me the ring, and they tell me, we're getting married. So tell me about him. Oh, he's the, most, he's the greatest guy. He's the most handsome. He's just debonair. He opens doors for me. I mean, chivalry's not dead. He's courteous, and he's gentle, and he's sweet, and, and he's just so loving. And, oh, I'm just so proud of my man. And they come up, and they make eyes at each other. And he watches her come through the doorway. And he's like, da 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 she is and he gets the old Adam look on him you know and here she comes and and I mean they're so it's so it's so fun to watch and it's so horrible to watch the deterioration of it because after he's had her for a while and after she's had him for a while they, that's what they look like and pretty soon she's complaining about him because she found out he's not perfect she didn't see that back there she didn't see that and he didn't see that. All he's looking at is that dress. And he's not looking at that dress. He's looking at the pearls. For those of you that didn't get that, just he's looking at the pearls. Oh, give it five years. Give it 15 years. Give it 30 years. She can't do anything right. She puts her mouth on him at work every day. Calls her sister, crabs to her best friend, and, and, and they're cursing themselves. It happens in the 21st century. Yes, it does. Yep. Pastor, I want this job. i got to have this job. I'm qualified for this job. I, w-. I said, well, you don't have to t- convince me. Well, I've, I've filled out the application, and I'm ready for the interview, and I've studied up on it, and I'm praying, and I'm asking you to agree with me, and i got 3,000 other people that are agreeing with me, and, and i got to, and, and boy, they want that job. 
And they come and testify in church. And they tell everybody. And they be, I got this job. And, and, they, and, and, and man, it's the greatest job for a while. For a while. But then, then the manna gets detestable. Or the promotion or the position. Hmm? How about church? Church? Oh, ours is a great church. I mean, there's nothing. Tell me everything good about your church. Well, everything is good about my church. I mean, the music is wonderful. The people are wonderful. The fellowship. We got the greatest pastor. He preaches the best messages. It's just wonderful. How's that the same person that like 13 months later despises everything about the church? Can't stand that music. None of the people there are loving. None of them. They're all hypocrites. That pastor, he's a demon in skin. Same person. Now, don't tell me everything about your job and everything about your spouse and everything about your church and everything about, you know that car, you had to have that car. You can buy any car you want, but you had to have that car. And, and that car, you know, that car gets to the point where I don't want that car anymore. What are you going to do? I'm going to trade it for a different car. Oh, okay. And that house, you could have bought any house. Oh, you show everybody your house. You put pictures, you post pictures of it, and you, you, you give tours, and you have parties. And you, Look, if we have this, and we have this, and we have this, and we have this, and then, and then just give it a few years. What happens? What happens? Pastor, pray for us. We're selling our house. What are you selling your house for? What are you selling it? I thought that was the best house. I thought that was the greatest house. I thought it was a wonderful house. You loved everything about your house. Don't love it anymore. Found a crack in the plaster. There's a one pipe in our basement. It leaks at one drop every month and a half. We can't keep that house. Can't keep that house. So what do you do? You pedal it. You trade it in for a different model. Same thing you want to do with your husband. Because you get tired of him. Your friends. 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 Church. This is just human nature. This isn't an indictment against anybody. This is just something to be aware of and alert to that... I want, the Lord wants me to help you to be a consistent praiser. Not to be those people, they, they, they praise Him while everything is going well, and then don't praise Him when it's not. And aren't happy because they've had something from Him for a while. You can sell your house. You can trade your car off. You know, I, I don't know how many miles you run your car, but I know one person, I know him personally, and he told me, I think it's about time to trade my car off. I said, <clears throat> how long have you had it? And he told me. I mean, like since the 1970s, it's got 358,000 miles on it. 358,000? I said, I, I believe you ought to. You know, you're going to light out walking one of these days if you don't trade that thing. Yeah, you don't have to be tired of it. You don't have to be discontent, and you don't have to be grumbling and complaining to trade a car off. You can be happy. Just trade the car. It's just a car. Yeah, amen. Yep. Yep. Happy, but then after you've had it a while, unhappy. That was the Israelites. That was the Israelites. How could these people in Matthew 21, Luke 19, Mark chapter 15, how, how could they, how could they, or 11, how, how could they be so happy and then three days later so vile and so angry and so upset to be saying, blessed is he that come, crucify him. Take him to the cross is what crucify means. Take him to the cross and kill him. Same people, the same multitude. The same multitude. Uh, I want to help you not be those people. Most people are happy, and because they are happy, they praise the Lord. When life is good, when they feel their prayers are being answered, and they're getting what it is that they desire, because of that, they're happy and they praise the Lord. But when you don't get what you want out of life, and life doesn't go your way, you don't get what you want, do you pout? Are you sullen toward the Lord? Does praise not come from your heart any longer? Or do you complain, murmur, or grumble because it's not fair, because the Lord doesn't love you anymore? Are you one of those people like God who never changes? No variableness. You just praise Him every day. Are you one of those Psalm 145 Christians I will extol you, O God, my King, every day. I will bless you. See, that ought to be our testimony. Somehow, 
somehow some humans just believe, well, if God isn't answering my prayer, then why should I praise him? Then why should I? Somehow it gives me the license to curse God. Remember Job's wife? Everything that Job went through in Job chapter 1, and in Job chapter 2, his wife walked to him and said, <clears throat> verse 9, Job 2 verse 9, why don't you just curse God and die? Man, what a great recommendation. No, what a terrible recommendation. Don't curse God and die. How about go up to your spouse and say, I know you're suffering. I know, I know this is hard on you. I know this has been a battle for you. But you just keep trusting God and you just keep praising him. Regardless of what it looks like. No, she said, you're going through all this stuff. You would be justified to curse God and die. No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. On the other hand, Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17, and then 18. Habakkuk 3, 17, and 18. These are such great verses. It says, though the fig trees... Now see, this, this person, I mean, they've got fig trees, they've got olive trees, they've got orchards, they've got vineyards, they've got herds, they've got flocks, and they've got crop fields. You're pretty safe when you diversify to that, to that level. I mean, that's like having some in futures and some in the stock market and some in mutual funds and some in precious metals and some in CDs and some in a savings account. You're pretty well covered, except when they all flop. And that's what happens here. Though the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be on the vine, the labor of the olive fail, the fields yield no moot, no meat, the flock be cut off from the fold, there's no herd in the stalls. Let me, let me keep going. The kids aren't behaving, that your body is sick, the people that you love are ill and infirm, your marriage isn't going very well, the business isn't getting any sales, you've got all these financial issues and struggles and problems coming your way as well. Nobody likes you. Everybody hates you. Your friends all abandon you. You feel alone. Your pastor's picking on you from the front because he looks at you while he's preaching. Three of your tires, not one, not one. You got two spares, but three of your tires went flat this morning. The goldfish went belly up in the tank. The dog peed all over the carpet. Your neighbor said they'd pick you up, and then they just lied and left and went without you. Battery's dead. Truck won't start. Nothing is going right. Nothing is going right. Why should I praise the Lord? I don't feel like it. What does your petty little feelings have anything to do with praising the Lord? The book says, I will. That's a determination of my will. Not my feelings. I don't feel like it. Not because things are going any, just every day, I will. Look at this person. Though the fig tree not blossom, no fruit in the vine, olive field fails, the fields yield no move, no meat, the flock cut off, no herds in the stalls. The next word is, yet I will rejoice in the Lord and will joy in the God of my salvation. It doesn't matter what's happening in the flocks. It doesn't matter what happened in the folds. It doesn't matter what's happening in my body. It doesn't matter what's happening in my family. It doesn't matter what's happening anywhere. The olive trees, the orchards, the stalls, none of it matters. I'm going to rejoice in the God of my salvation. That's how you become a consistent praiser. Not Hosanna one day, crucify in the next day. That's how you become a consistent praiser. Not rejoicing on one side of, uh, of the ocean and, and, and murmuring and complaining on the other side. The way you do that is you focus on the one thing that never changes, the one thing that never, ever fails, and that's your salvation and your God, the God of your salvation. Jesus said in Luke 10 and verse 20, <coughs> he said, don't rejoice because you have great ministry success, because someday you're not going to have great ministry success. Don't rejoice in that. He said, rejoice in this, that your name is written in heaven. Nobody can take that away from you. If you've made Jesus Christ your personal Savior and Lord of your life, your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, and that can never change. You can rejoice in that every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. Amen. Psalm 144, verse 15. Psalm 144, verse 15. It says, happy are the people that are in such a case. Yea, happy is the people whose God is the Lord. See, if I'm happy because I made a great dividend, if I'm happy because my kids got straight A's, if I'm happy because my daughter got first chair in the ensemble, if I'm happy because Paula's happy, you know, when mama's happy, everybody's happy. 
Nonsense. I don't care if mom is happy or unhappy. My God is the Lord. Happy are the, happy are the people whose God is the Lord. Amen. Happy are the people. Well, I didn't get what I want for Christmas. Well, recall Santa. Just be happy. Huh? Be happy. No, I'm not happy because I got what I wanted for Christmas, because I got what I wanted out of the Easter Bunny, because I got what I wanted out of my husband, because I got what I wanted out of my pastor, because I got what I wanted out of my employer. No, happy are the people whose God is the Lord. But if I base my happiness and therefore the resulting praise to my God, if I base that on anything of this, this life, sooner or later it's going to get old. Sooner or later it's going, to get, it's going to get rusty. Sooner or later it's not going to perform the way I want it to. And then I'll lose my joy and therefore I'll lose my praise. But if I'll keep my eyes on the God of my salvation, happy are the people whose God is the Lord and my rejoicing is based on that my name is written in heaven, then that'll never change. Because God never changes, my salvation never changes, and the fact that my name is written there in the Lamb's book of life, that will never, ever, ever change. I'll find myself, I'll find myself in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, the will of God. What's the will of God? 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, in everything, not because of everything, but in the midst of everything, not for everything, but in everything. Well, Pastor, you don't understand. I've been falsely accused. In everything. But, but, but Pastor, we just had a death in the family. In everything. But Pastor, we just lost a lot of money. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you in everything. I'm going to close uh, in, in 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles chapter 20. And, 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 and I love this story, and I wish I had time, uh, I don't, but I wish I had time to, to just, just share the entire account with you. But in, in 2 chapter 20, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, the Israelites, God's people, they find themselves surrounded by their enemies. Do you ever feel like you're surrounded? And, 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 and the devil don't fight fair, and, and, and the attacks that come against you are numerous and many, and they come on many fronts, and it's all at the same time. Well, that's what happened to these folks. And they had three different militaries coming at them, three different nations, three different armadas, all closing in on them at the same time. If you remember geography, you know that west of Israel is what? Water. Thank you. The Mediterranean. You're not going to retreat into the ocean, at least not very far. You're not going to retreat to the, to the west. And they had three different armies coming against them, one out of the east, one out of the south, and one out of the north. They are surrounded. And, and they said, they, they just put it plainly. They, didn't, they, didn't, they weren't concerned about a good confession. They just said to God, we don't know what to do. You know what? If you don't know what to do, he understands that vernacular. And we just don't know what to do. And, 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 and that's what they said. They, 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 they named them in verse 10, Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir. Those were the, the three nations that were coming against them. <coughs> they said in verse 12, Our God, will you not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that comes against us. Neither know we what to do. Now that's something. When you look at a situation and, and you just say, uh, we don't know what to do. We don't know what to do. You can try everything you know to do, but th this is bigger than they are, and they acknowledge it. We have no might against this. There is nothing I can do about this. This is bigger than I am. This is out of my control. That's not a bad thing when you finally realize you're not in control. I I'm not in control. This is out of my control. This is bigger than I am, and I don't know what to do. And I have no might against these three armies that are coming in three different directions against us. We don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. See, there's something about our God. There's something about our God that just loves it when his people come to him and say, and say this is bigger than I am, and, 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 and I don't know what to do, and it's challenging. And, and I mean, as they get closer, you can see the dust on the horizon. You can see the dust coming up. 
from, from, from these huge armies and these warriors all coming in, in formation with their shields and swords and spears. And, and then as they get closer, you can, you can actually hear their chants and their shouts as they march in cadence. And then as they get even closer, you can hear their armor chinking and, and the, 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 the ground rumbles under tens of thousands of troops on all sides of you. And you hold those little babies inside those walls and they're, they're looking around and starting to cry and people are trembling and nobody knows what to do. And they say, we just look to you, Lord. What should we do? And the Lord just says, praise me. What? Yeah, I just want you to praise me. See, when everything's going bad in your life, uh, you, you can struggle, you can swat, you can try every formula, you can go to every book, you can try every, everything. And he says, just praise me. Just praise me. See, whether it's going our way or not, whether we're happy or sad, whether we get what we think we deserve out of life or we don't, he just wants you to praise him. What a great, tremendous, powerful example of things are not going your way. The, 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 the bluebirds aren't singing and the, and the sky isn't blue and the sun isn't shining, and the sky isn't cloudless, and the, and the winds aren't light, and everything is wonderful. No, 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 not, not here, not today. We're all about to die. We're going to be butchered. They're going to cave our walls in, come in, and, and, and they'll murder us all, and we don't know what to do about it. A lot bigger than us. Just praise me. Just praise me. Do you know how many people, how many people do you think you know that would say, that is the dumbest thing I have ever heard? How many people do you know that would say, that makes no sense at all. That is not logical. Now, that would be a guy. That is not logical. See, that's what I would say. There's no, that, that, there's no rationale. What are you thinking? Where's your brain? See, they couldn't get mixed up in that. They just had to do what the Lord said. And they had spearmen. They had bowmen. They had swordsmen. They, 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 they had mounted cavalry. They, they, they had artillery. They had big catapults inside of Jerusalem. And they could have formulated their war plan. And we're going we're gonna to take them. When, when, they, when they hit the 400-yard line, the catapults will start. And when they hit the 100-yard line, the, the, the bowmen will all launch. And when they hit the 30-yard line, the spearmen will all hurl. And, and then the mounted cavalry will out. The, and then the swordsmen will charge. And the Lord said, no, 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 no. Put the praise and worship team out. Put the worshipers out there. Put the singers out there. Send the choir. Send the choir. And don't give any of them a weapon. Don't even give them a butter knife. Don't even give them one of those little plastic ones. No, not even that. Don't even give them one of those little cocktail swords, you know, about that long, yellow. Don't even give them one of those. No weapons whatsoever. See, see, when God gets involved in your fight, you don't have to fight. He doesn't need your help. Matter of fact, he doesn't even want your help. And, and that's where too many people, they get, they get in God's way. If he answered your prayer, he'd have to share the glory with you, and he will not do it. You tell everybody about, well, I prayed and I fasted and I confessed and I and I and I and I and I. He, he, you won't get it. You haven't learned this secret yet. You won't get it. Because he would have to share the glory with you, and it's never going to happen. He said, the battle is not yours, this is mine. Stand ye still and see the salvation of your God. This isn't the first time he said it. He said it when they were standing at the Red Sea. What are you going to do to walk across the Red Sea? Get buckets out? Here, we threw a hose down there. One of you guys grab the end of that hose. And go, <laughs> what are you doing, siphoning out the ocean? How it must look to the angels when we try to help God. They got to go like this. <laughs> Here they go again. Didn't they ever read about Abraham when he tried to help God and what happened? Hagar, Ish, Mel. No, no, he said, he said, you don't have to fight. You just stand still. All you have to do is praise me. All you have to do is praise me. All you have to do is praise me. And when they praised, <clears throat> then the Lord got involved. Not, they didn't praise him because everything was going well. 
Most people would wait till the battle was over and the victory is won, and then they'd shout praise the Lord. They had to go shout praise the Lord for his goodness and his mercy before the battle ever even started. And when they did, God caused confusion in the minds of all of the enemies. And they got mixed up in the dust, and they confused who their enemy was, and they turned on each other. They were confounded, the Bible says, and they started to slaughter each other. And they fought until every single last soldier was dead. And they went out, and it took them three days to pick up all of the loot, the spoils, all of the, all of the weapons, all of the wealth, all of the food. It took them three days just to bring it all back into the city. All because they obeyed God. And they praised him before the battle ever started, not waited till after it was done. Psalm 34.1 is your assignment. Homework. It's, it's for you to read. It's for you to meditate. It's for you to memorize, but much more important than reading it, memorizing it, meditating it, put it into practice, do it. Psalm 34, verse 1. I will bless the Lord sometimes, in the good times, at convenient times. I will bless the Lord at all times. Say that much with me. I will bless the Lord at all times. Isn't that great? It's not a result of my emotion, my feeling. I feel like it. It's Sunday morning. No, no, no. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. All times, continually. Be a all times praiser. Be a continual praiser. Never let your praise for the Lord be based on the circumstance of life. Don't be a conditional Palm Sunday Christian. Matter of fact, don't be a Palm Sunday Christian. Be a every Sunday Christian. Be a Monday Christian, a Tuesday Christian, a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday Christian, a Saturday Christian, at all times Christian. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. God, continue to bless you, and may you continue to bless God. Let's stand together this morning. Our altar ministry team is on their way to the altar right now. They're here to pray with you, pray over you, and pray for you. Any of these ladies and gentlemen that, that are here, these couples that are here, uh, they're here to share with you and pray over you and with you if you'd like prayer in any area or any realm or any arena of life. Just come and see one of them. They'll be happy to pray with you. I hope this word has inspired you and encouraged you to not let the circumstances of life be the gauge of whether or not you praise the Lord and to not change ever, no matter what happens. Life is, is difficult at times. No question about it. Life is painful. Life is very challenging. Life has its more than its share of heartache for every one of us. And the Lord doesn't, doesn't not acknowledge that. The Bible says he's touched with the feeling of our pain the feeling of our infirmities, the feeling of our weaknesses and challenges. He's touched by that. But what he's looking for is for you and I not to wilt under that, but to stand right up and put our hand toward heaven and say, I'll bless the Lord at all times. doesn't matter what I'm going through. doesn't matter what I'm facing. doesn't matter what's in my home. doesn't matter what's at my job. doesn't matter what I've just gone through or what I'm just going through or what I may go through. I'll never stop praising the Lord. I'll never stop. I'll never stop. We're going to be one of those. We're going to be one of those Christians. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Lord in heaven. Thank you for watching The Word of the Lord, the weekly television broadcast of Living Word Christian Church. Living Word Christian Church welcomes you to join us at 2015 Ward Avenue in La Crosse, Wisconsin, Sunday mornings at 815 and 1030, and Wednesday evenings at 7. For more information on Living Word Christian Church, visit us on the web at lwcclax.com.